Australia's leading role. Member for Charlton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, October is Mental Health Month. Last week was Mental Health Week, and Saturday, October 10, was World Mental Health Day. Sadly, in just one week, approximately 49 people will commit suicide, and approximately 1,490 will attempt suicide. In 2013, suicide was the leading cause of death of children between 5 and 17 years of age—a tragic statistic. These are indeed startling statistics to contemplate. At a dinner I recently attended for Hunterlink Recovery Services, I was confronted with further statistics. Hunterlink Recovery Services is a unique employment assistance program that provides support and counselling 24 hours a day, seven days a week. At this dinner, I listened to speakers candidly discussing their mental health journey. One journey was a man from the Hunter region, my region, a family man, a hard-working man who worked in the coal mines, a man who needed help, not with his physical health, but his mental health. Thankfully, this man was not a statistic. This man was strong enough to seek the services of Hunterlink and was able to be assisted. Hunterlink was formed by Paul Carris, who, with the Maritime Union of Australia, noticed the need for support, recovery and welfare in the maritime and related industries. With the support of the unions, some very progressive employers and the community, in five short years, Hunterlink has grown from a small mental health service provider in Newcastle to a national service with a 24-hour hotline and an employment assistance program. This service endeavours to provide individualised support to maritime workers, maritime stakeholders, related industries in the local community. They do not turn anyone away, and they're particularly proud of that fact. Hunterlink also reaches out to international seafarers visiting Australian waters. This was recently highlighted when the coal vessel Sage of Sagittarius docked in Newcastle, and Hunterlink was able to provide counselling to the crew who had lost three seafarers under very unusual circumstances. Gavin Kelso, Hunterlink's CEO, is dedicated to reaching beyond Australian waters and looking to the future, hoping to help at risk seafarers struggling with a mental illness, regardless of where the ship is sailing. In the past two years, mental health reform has been waning. The need for mental health support is increasing, yet we see not enough attention paid to it. Labor believes that long-term mental health reform focused on delivering a more integrated and whole-of-government approach must be a national priority that requires strong leadership. When Labor was in government, we recognised that mental health reform was needed. It was and continues to be a priority for us. It was Labor who had the first and only mental health minister, my colleague, the member for Port Adelaide, uh, who brought mental health to the Cabinet table. Nearly one in five Australian adults will experience mental ill health each year, and nearly half of our adult population will experience a mental illness at some point during their lives. Nearly, uh, sorry, for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, the rate of mental illness is three times the rate of other Australians. The LGBTIQ community live with higher rates of mental illness, self-harm and suicide as well. And sadly, the rate of suicide in rural and remote Australia is 66 per cent higher than in cities. Last Friday, Labor announced its plan for better support for people with mental illness, and this plan supports the National Mental Health Commission's recommendations. In its report, the Commission made 25 recommendations and Labor is committed to the recommended target to reduce suicides by 50 per cent over the next 10 years. We will do this through a comprehensive tiered approach that sets incremental targets to reach a final target of reducing suicide and suicide attempts. If elected, Labor will ensure those living with mental illness and their carers who do not receive a package of support through the NDIS will still receive support and care they need. I want to pay tribute to the work of Senator Jan McLucas in his policy area, and can I say how excited I am that my friend Senator Katie Gallagher uh, was appointed to the Shadow Cabinet in the role of Min Shadow Minister for Mental Health. I'm sure she'll do a great job building on Senator McLucas's legacy. Mr. Speaker, the annual cost of mental illness in Australia has been estimated to be between $20 and $60 billion a year, including lost productivity and labour force participation. We can reverse this by giving people the support they need when they need it. Thankfully, organisations such as Hunterlink Recovery Services are there to give support where needed. However, more needs to be done. Mental health needs to be a priority for the federal government. It was when Labor was in government and will be when Labor, hopefully, is re-elected. I want to pay tribute to the work of Hunterlink, other organisations, the trade unions such as the MUA and employer groups who support these very important programs. They literally are saving people's lives every day. And I want to conclude with a saying that uh, ex-NRL player Dan Hunt said on the night, 
It is not weak to speak. It is not weak to speak, Mr. Speaker. I call the member for Durack. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm very pleased to rise today to talk about my recent travels to the Pilbara and Kimberley late last week in my electorate of Durack. WA's North West is indeed one of the most unique, diverse and picturesque regions in Australia. As stated in the Northern Australia White Paper, Our North, Our Future, the Pilbara and the Kimberley have enormous potential, and the Turnbull government is committed to developing not just those two regions but the whole of Northern Australia, which is why we have now had the appointment of a minister for the region, Josh Frydenberg. And the reason for this, Mr Speaker, the North is important. We know that the earnings from the Pilbara alone are larger than 119 countries' economies, yet generated by only 60,000 people. A remarkable achievement. Last Wednesday, I was pleased to be able to chair the Aboriginal engagement in the Pilbara session of CEDAR's Future of the Pilbara Forum. I discussed the work I'm doing on the Indigenous Affairs Standing Committee, such as our recent inquiry into the effects of alcohol in Indigenous communities and our upcoming inquiry into educational outcomes for Indigenous students. Mr Speaker, we've heard it before, the Pilbara became the epicentre